Just when you thought I had covered all Italian wines, up pops an Alianico. Welcome back to Drinking It In. I'm your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better. And uh, today we're going back to Italy for another big red wine um, from, uh, it's, it's an Alianico grape. Um, these, uh, so Alianico is what I would say is the, uh, probably the, the grape that has the third best reputation, at least from a red perspective in Italy. Uh, Nebbiolo being one, Sangiovese being number two, or at least the top two. And then Alianico is kind of a close third, but it's not very well known. Um, and, you know, outside of really uh, maybe the sommelier community or people who have a real deep knowledge of, of Italy, there's just not a lot of exposure uh, and popularity around Alianico. It's, um, these wines are from Campania, Southern Italy, Campania, Basilicata are the two main regions um, that do, is where Alianico thrives. Um, this is an Alianico del the Vulture, del Vulture. I love it. Anytime you see Vulture on a, on a wine label, that's good. I kid, it's del Vulture. You want to speak Italian properly, or at least closer to being properly. So this is a, so 2019 Tenuto del Portale Alianico del Vulture, and um, this is a um, a DOC wine, as you can see from the from the label. So Domini. Excuse me, Dominazione di Origine Controllata. Um, that just, again, it means there are rules around being able to bottle your wine as, you know, with that Alianico del Vottore uh, label. Um, let's talk a little bit about Alianico while hopefully this opens up in, uh, in the glass a little. So, big red wine. So, if you think of the you know, of our scale, right, where you have the lightest wine, let's just call it uh, Gamay for now, the lightest wine, and then you've got the, the biggest wine uh, in terms of body, we'll call that Syrah. Alianico is going to be right up at the top of that scale. Uh, it's a big, these wines are big, these wines are, they have, they're big bodied, big tannined, big acid. And um, usually a lot of dark fruit. Uh, they could have some peppercorns, you know, some a lot of savory herbs in them. Uh, if you're going to be serving an Alianico, you're going to want big meats, stews, lamb, uh, anything that maybe has a lot of mushrooms. Like it can also play well with some, you know, stuff that may be heavy on soy sauce and things like that. But you know, that's probably not where you you know, would necessarily go directly if you're going to drink some Alianico. So um, let us see. I, I just opened this about a half hour ago. Um, let's see, what it, let's see what, it, what it tastes like and what it smells like. So this wine has a, hmm, I don't know, because I just said soy sauce. I got a soy sauce note. So there's an earthy quality to this wine. It's not dirty. There's a little like sort of a wet leaves, wet leaves, some soy sauce. There's a fair amount of uh, like dried plums or prunes, however you want to think of, think of that. Um, maybe a little bit of a chocolate covered cherry. So there's, a, there's a lot happening in this wine. Chocolate covered cherry, prunes, soy sauce, wet leaves. Okay. And you can see it's it's pretty dark. Not like it's not black as night, right? In terms of uh color, but it's it's dark. All right, let's give it a try. Enough smelling. Hmm. Tannins are there, but my initial reaction was, wow, this is much smoother, 
elegant, surprising for a newer Alianico, because sometimes these things would benefit from some bottle age. There's a chocolatey note here. Those black cherries are all over the place. This is nice. There's almost a prettiness to it, which I, it's, so there's a, you know, like I was on the, on the nose, there's a lot going on on the palate. There's a lot going on. Um, there's a, there's a light freshness to this wine that is shocking me right now. Uh, so like I said, some black cherries. It's very elegant. It's very, it's velvety. Wow. All right. Yeah, I get hints of um, hints of chocolate. So chocolate, some cinnamon, a little spot, not cinnamon, um, chocolate, like a uh, like a warm nutmeggy type spice. Has a perfumey feel to it. This is this is a beautiful wine. All right, cool. Well, um, you know. If I've taught you anything, it's that you got to get out and drink more Italian wine, especially varieties that you might not have seen before. As a matter of fact, I think the last time I had an Alianico was when I had dinner in Manhattan with my cousin Vinny, um, probably five years ago, a long time ago, at least five years ago. So uh, I have been remiss. I haven't been drinking enough Alianico in my uh, in my pursuits here. So. Uh, and this wine is going, this is one that would, this is the type of wine where you, you drink it and you're like, hmm, okay. Now, every time I see an Alianico, I'm going to be looking to maybe pull it off the shelf because it was that good. Hey, I hope, uh, hope everyone's doing well out there. I'd encourage you to like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. You know, the more, um, more people we get on board, the, you know, the, the, the better, uh, you know, the, the more we can grow. That makes no sense. Whatever. So just, you know, subscribe, you know, and throw, throw some comments in there. Um, I, I got a funny comment from someone on, uh, on an older video calling me a Karen and a hater of the rap game because I was, I guess I didn't say kind words about that Luke Belair wine, which is just like really confusing and expensive for what it is. But, you know, I'll take it all. I love the love and even the hate. So, uh, I will see you soon. Uh, I got to work on my outros. Cheers, folks.